Well, hey guys, Ryan Earnhardt here from creativesoundlab.tv, where audio recording is an art form. And I had a, a quick tip for you today. Um, really, it's something really cool that I really have forgotten that I have been doing all along. And if you don't know about it, well, I think you should learn how to really manipulate this uh, this trick using this technique. And really the technique is, is a, a more in-depth understanding of how to use polar patterns. Now, a lot of times, uh, a polar pattern on, say, a large diaphragm condenser, you think of, oh, cardioid, you know, that's going to pick up a lot of the front, and then it will pick up a little bit from the sides and none of the back. And I, when I was first starting out, I would always think, oh, well, I think I want to pick up some of what's on the sides, but I know, you know, mostly in the front, uh, I think that's what I want. And to be honest, I really didn't understand how to manipulate sound by using the polar pattern. Now, the, the tip for today is really that um, if you use a directional microphone, so cardioid and figure eight, those microphones will have the most proximity effect. And that's basically where you get a bass boost the closer you get to a microphone. Now, there's also um, kind of the opposite happening in the other direction. So you have omnidirectional microphones, which we can switch this into, and they will have less and less proximity effect. So this can be really cool. Um, if you think of it in less of terms of what direction the microphone is picking stuff up from, and you think of it more as a tonality tool, now you can start thinking, oh, okay, if I put it in omnidirectional, that means I can get the vocalist really close right up on the mic, and I can get that really immediate sound that's great for, say, background vocals. Or if I can't get the, the mic close to the singer at all because they're playing an acoustic guitar and it's really, it's, you know, it's, it's, really not able to get any closer than maybe eight inches out. Well, figure eight might be perfect because you get more proximity effect at a greater distance. So what I want to kind of show to you today is besides how you'd apply this in real life is really show you and using this kind of in real time here, um, the effects of proximity effect and how they relate to polar pattern. In the studio, I'm assuming that nothing else is going on in the room, and so that's why I'm, I'm doing this. If I had a live band going on, I would definitely have at least cardioid. Um, if I was using something on toms, you know, maybe it's, you know, slightly more towards figure eight because there's a nose out to the side that maybe could be aimed at cymbals, uh, or cardioid could be aimed at the back uh, of a snare drum mic to keep the hi-hat going into that snare drum. So there's definitely uses for knolls and microphones, but today is how the polar pattern is affecting the tone of the mic based on how much proximity effect is naturally there because of the directional characteristics of the mic. So this is uh, cardioid, and I am, you know, six inches out or so, and as I get closer to the mic, you can see that I'm going to have more proximity effect, okay? And pardon me if I, you know, blow into the mic. I'm just trying to do this, you know, very effectively here. So you can really see the proximity effect. And my voice should be a little bit lower, actually a lot lower. And then as I come off the mic, and each mic is going to be a little different and where this happens. Um, some mics, it'll be kind of here. Some mics, it'll be here. Uh, and a lot of times what I'll do is I'll use a, a pop screen and I'll actually set this. So if I want a vocalist to be, you know, let's say, let's say if this is a perfect position for a vocalist, I'll actually have this screen and I'll say two fingers, I'll just tell them two fingers and they'll just come right like this. So they're, it's not quite hitting their nose, two fingers usually keeps it from hitting their nose. And they know just, just by the feel of how close it is to their face of if they're, you know, crowding the mic or if they're too far off the mic. So I help this, uh, I help the, the vocalist kind of gauge their distance and keep consistency in the distance based on the screen. Uh, and that's really, uh, I think, key uh, when you're trying to dial in proximity effect. So what I can do now, 
um, is because this is a tube mic. This is the the Rode K2. It's a tube mic, so um, a lot of times uh, you'll have the polar pattern right on the power supply because uh, it's high voltage. And so we change it here instead of on the mic. If it was solid state, like uh, like the NT uh, 2000s, I've, I've talked about a lot. It's right on the mic. Uh, but this is cool just for the video because we can see it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get close to the mic and turn it to Omni. So I'll turn it to Omni. So you should hear less proximity effect. And this should allow somebody to get right up close to the mic, which is great for background vocals or something that you just want really in the face of the listener. And keep in mind that it's going to be exponentially louder than anything else in the room because you're so close to the mic that um, it's more about you know, a ratio of volume. Okay, it's a ratio. So yeah, it'll pick up a little bit of the room, but it's gonna be so much louder because you're just, you're that close to the mic. And figure eight, figure eight. So this should have the most proximity effect. It's the most directional. It has nulls out to the side here and it should have the most proximity effect. So this means that uh, the proximity effect could be even coming into play way back here. Okay, uh, so this would be great for singer-songwriter when you're using a microphone just for vocal, a microphone just for acoustic guitar, and you're trying to mainly capture the vocal, and you can use the null of this mic and point it down to the guitar, to the guitar so you're getting less of the guitar that's hopefully out to the side, so you point it kind of like this, and then you get most proximity effect in this pattern because that way uh, they don't have to crowd the mic and it'll still sound nice and full, even at a distance. Uh, so this might be a little too far for a cardioid, usually, is, is what I would think. Uh, but hopefully, I'll have to go back and listen to this video uh, once I'm done editing. Hopefully this sounds pretty good. And then back to cardioid. This is probably where I put it, cardioid. Probably, probably about right here for cardioid. And then for omni, I'd, I'd probably have somebody right up close to the mic. So. That's really how you can shape the tonalities of, say, a vocalist by using the polar patterns. It's not so much, uh, in the studio at least, it's not so much, hey, I don't want to record you know, this wall or the amps that are doing nothing right now. Um, it's more about, hey, if we only have one thing in the room making noise, we can really take advantage of this. We can have the vocalist maybe off the mic a little bit. Um, if you have a bad room, it may not be such a good idea. Uh, but it can allow you to get real close and real up on the mic without it being overloaded by low end. I'd love to hear your questions below in the comments. I'll be hanging out below with you, answering any questions that you have. I'll see you there.